What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and as promised, we finally have the review for the Gigabyte V250 FinTech Mining Motherboard, so stick around. Alrighty, so maybe Gigabyte's a little late to the game, of course. We've already had entries from both ASRock, Biostar, as well as ASUS, so I say both, but three other motherboard manufacturers that have already jumped into the game for the mining motherboards. You can find at least the ASRock on my channel here, and I haven't had a chance to review the others, but maybe we'll get to that at another time. The problem here is that the release for this motherboard appears to be a little too late to the game. And by that I mean right now to come out with a mining motherboard for GPUs in particular seems to be a bad time as it's not going to sell as well as it would have let's say like June of 2017 all the way through January of 2018. Now all of that aside, people are still mining and there's still plenty of good reasons to keep mining. It's just really hard as well to go ahead and find any GPUs to install in these boards. If you do have enough GPUs or you've come across, you know, 12 of them in some sort of mine somewhere that I don't know about, like maybe China, then you might want to pick one of these up. It does support only 12 GPUs with 11 PCIe by 1 and a single PCIe by 16 slot. That by 16 slot does support video out that you can adjust in the BIOS and we'll talk about my glitching screen here in a second. The BIOS is up, but I'm not sure what's going on with that there. Along with the PCIe slots on the motherboard, you're also going to have two Molex power adapters for additional power to those slots. Now, in theory, you're going to want to have both of those supplied with power from your power supply if you're installing all 12 GPUs. However, this might not be necessary depending on which GPUs you're using and how much power you're actually drawing as you should be using powered PCIe risers. Now, as far as CPU support, you're gonna to wanna to be looking for Cabby Lake and Skylake CPUs. I do currently have an i3-6100 in there and it came right up, so there was no problems with that particular CPU in case you're looking at purchasing one of. However, I would recommend something along the lines of the G4400 or G3930 to save some DOSH. The motherboard's gonna require a standard 24 pin power adapter for the CPU as well as an additional 8 pin power adapter. One of the nice things about this motherboard in particular is that it does come shipped with a three-way power supply splitter out of the box so you can go ahead and hook up up to three power supplies directly to this motherboard without having to worry about going out and purchasing a splitter separately. Another nice thing is that while it doesn't actually have power or reset on the motherboard itself, they do ship it with a little button that you just plug into the front IO so the front panel header on the bottom of the motherboard and once you do that you can control the power and reset from the motherboard without having to plug in a separate button so both of the bases covered there thinking ahead with just shipping some things that you might actually need in the future or right away without you having to go and find it from another person or retailer. Now hopping into the BIOS is going to be pretty basic and straightforward. Now since it's a B250 there's going to be no overclocking support on the CPU itself and there's no real XMP profiles to set that I could see. However you can adjust memory timings accordingly to your preference. I wouldn't really recommend it anyways because you don't need to. The 2133 base speed is going to be fine. Now as well in the BIOS you are going to pretty much find everything you could need for mining including the 4G decoding, above 4G decoding, as well as some of the different speeds for your PCIe rails and of course some power settings. Now it did take me a little bit to find out where the actual settings were to go ahead and have the motherboard power on when voltage was applied to the motherboard. So if you had a power loss, it would come back on. And actually under power settings, it's just called AC back. And once I enabled that, I went ahead and test. And I can show you right here real quick that if you just now go ahead and cut the power off at the power supply from the wall and then power it back on, the motherboard will automatically power back on. So good feature to have. I wanted to make sure it had that for y'all. Now there is no M.2 slot or M SATA slot. So you're gonna be looking at booting your operating system off either a SATA port or a USB port. 
Now the rear IO does have support for all your basic audio and as well as four USB 3.0 slots and two USB 2.0 slots. And of course it's got a good old PS2 slot there. You're also going to have the integrated graphics output, which includes both DVI and VGA. Now I did want to mention, funny enough, it does come shipped with some LEDs on the motherboard. You can turn those off in the bio settings like you can see right here. So just go ahead and make sure you get that turned off because it is quite annoying. So that pretty much covers the review for the Gigabyte B250 FinTech Mining Motherboard. Now while I did purchase this motherboard myself, I did decide to go ahead and give it away to one lucky winner in conjunction or partnership with UFD Tech, and I'll leave links to both the giveaway and his channel in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as I said, this may be kind of late. Let me know, is it kind of late to be releasing a mining motherboard for GPUs, or do you think it's a good time to go ahead and release one? I'm excited to hear your thoughts, and I'll see you next Tuesday.